Welcome to Conversations with Educators, where we bring educators from across the country to talk about topics like college and career readiness, graduation tracking, teacher growth, assessment coordination, and more. Let's get started. Okay, Melissa, I think we're going to go ahead and and get started. Um, Again, thank you all for for joining us today uh, for another session of conversations with educators. And we're really excited about this topic today uh, because we know that it impacts many, many of you. Um, So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about College Career Military, our CCMR, as we lovingly uh, refer to it here in Texas. Uh, We know that there are also many other states that are now uh, looking at those accountability measures as well. So I I think the strategies and some of the ideas shared today is going to be beneficial for for all of you. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to visit with our guest speaker is Melissa Foster, and she is, well, she's had a variety of leadership roles in, in districts and um, former teacher and counselor. Melissa, share with us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, like Kim said, I'm Melissa Foster. I've uh, been in education for 23 years. 11 of those have been as a third grade and kindergarten teacher. Um, 10 years have been devoted to school counseling, where I've been a college career counselor and the lead high school counselor, and I've been a a middle school counselor as well. Then I moved up in administration as an assistant principal at Mineola, and then I've been the CTE coordinator on the campus, and then um, this is starting my second year as the director of curriculum instruction. I oversee the counselors and I am the district CTE coordinator. So I have assisted the CTE director um, for many, many years. Yes, and thank you so much time. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us today, Melissa. Um, I know that you wear many hats in the district as many of our participants do as well. So um, what we're gonna talk about today is Uh, just some baseline understanding of CCMR. Then we're going to really dive into what is the counselor's role in this process, because there are so many different accountability measures and data points, and then some of the keys to success that Melissa has found. So um, following that, we'll have a live Q&A where you can drop in some questions specifically for Melissa around CCMR. And uh, we just look forward to the conversation. So Melissa, start out and just kind of um, help us understand CCMR. I know there's lots of changes that that happen on a regular basis, but um, give us that um, overview and maybe some of the new specifics. Okay. So as we know in Texas, CCMR indicator stands for College Career and Military Readiness. We have the college readiness piece where um, if you meet the indicator on AP tests where you score a three or higher or a four on the IB tests, then you can earn a college readiness point. Um, the TSI, um, Texas Success Initiative, the overarching uh, testing component, which composes of SAT, ACT, and then TSI, you can meet the college readiness scores in reading or math, and you can um, use one from each section. So what I mean by that is if you if the student scores well in the SAT reading and then the TSI math, then you can count that together. Then you have your dual credit options where you can have three hours of reading or e- English 1301, 1302 that counts for that, or three hours of mathematics course, or nine hours of dual credit in other areas. Um, That's where you just have to be sure that all of that's being coded in PEMS correctly. Um, College readiness can be deemed by earning an associate's degree or Texas on-ramps. And I'm not as familiar with Texas on-ramps because we don't use it, but it is definitely a viable option for uh, lots of school districts. 
Um, then career readiness can earn you a point. Um, and that can be earned through the IBCs uh, aligned with the programs of study. Um, level one or level two certificates that they earn through their dual credit opportunities. Um, your special education students, if you code them with primarily, we use 54s and 55s um, that earns their CCMR points. Um, or there's a different one where you graduate under a, an advanced diploma as a current special ed student. And then we're very excited that military readiness is actually back um, this year. So if you enlist in a military branch and you secure their DD-1 form and that's uploaded into TEAL, then you can count that as the CCMR point. So that's just a brief overview reminder of what the CCMR indicators are. And so I made some um, notes about some changes that um, are ongoing through this year that I wanted to, to bring up. Okay. Um, so one of those is making sure your schedules have 45 minutes devoted to the one period CTE course or a full 90 minutes devoted throughout the whole school year because you want those to average out because the SAW it, which is the attendance handbook, it says that we have to have an average of those minutes. So it would be taking your instructional days and then dividing that by, by um, to come up with the 45 minute average. I've heard though, that when the saw comes out in October, that they may have adjusted that back. So we're kind of waiting to see the wording so that um, on pep rally days and that kind of thing, that that's no longer gonna be a detriment to us, which it has been this year where we had to make sure everything averaged out. And a lot of school districts had to go in and change their schedules to um, have 46 and 47 minute class periods where they had had less or more. To, yeah, to fill in that gap. That's, yeah. a, really, that's a really critical point because that, in turn affects funding yes. um, and not only your accountability, but funding as well. So that's, um, that's something that I hadn't thought of. So thanks for sharing that. Um, all right. So that's an overview of CCMR, but how do we get counselors up to speed? Because I know there's a lot of new counselors and counselors are changing positions or moving into the high school level in particular. Um, and because the accountability system is so based on CCMR um, and that bonus funding that's available, Melissa, share with us some things um, that counselors can do and, and what is their role? Um, so really, I think that counselors need to go above and beyond in their education when it comes to CCMR and um, go to a lot of the different classes, even if it says for the CTE coordinator, CTE director, because we have our hands in so many things um, that we, we do every day. Because, you know, one of our jobs as counselors is to make sure we equip students with the skills and readiness to thrive in a post-secondary world um, for them, whether that's college, career, whatever they choose to do. So we have to find that balance between what's best for students and that accountability piece. And we know that this is reflected in the Texas Model for Comprehensive School Counseling Program because high performing programs um, from Head Start all the way to 12th grade um, are touching on those. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times what you have to do is just be aware of lessons that you're doing, going into the classrooms, figuring out what the kids' strengths and weaknesses are, uh, career exploration, what, what that looks like. It can vary from, you know, age to groups, activities, speakers, career days, college fairs, um, at-risk support is really big in the counseling world, making sure that you're supporting those kids that are struggling uh, academically or even with decisions about what they want to do in those next steps. Um, course selection is a big deal, um, especially starting middle school and then some bigger schools that actually have some course selections in their intermediate um, sixth grade area. Um, endorsement selection is a big um, factor into CCMR. 
And then also college assistance, making sure that you're providing the kids and the parents with um, information about FAFSA and um, their choices. Um, I know that like UT Tyler um, provides Mineola with a six academic success coach, a career counseling. And so that's a big support to um, Mineola students because they come, I think they're coming twice a month now and they actually sit with them in our student center library area and they are talking with them and following up with them about, hey, can I help you with your FAFSA or can I help you with college applications? So reaching out to your local um, college, uh, whether it's the community college or a close university, they may have a program where they can help you um, assist your counselors with doing some of these things. Um, and then that leads to helping with career assistance as well, because you can have conversations with the students about what program or study they want to have, and that's helping select them so they make it to that practicum level and they're exploring careers. Yeah. What are some specific things that you all have done to assist with that um, poaching of students and formulating that graduation plan that's required, you know, of eighth graders? And um, what are some specific things that you guys have found to be successful? So um, we really um, start early with our career exploration piece at the lower grade levels. I know a lot of times, um, a lot of uh, presenters are gonna talk about like wearing college shirt days and that kind of thing, but we need to be more intentional with that with the young kids um, where you're having those conversations about what your t-shirt means, about why did you pick that school, so that the teachers are putting that out there. Because a lot of times we know as educators, the students are only know about the college experience or the job experience of their immediate family members. So we need to be sure that we're exposing them to others. And we don't want those superficial ideas of just a college day shirt where they just run to Walmart, go by UT Austin and uh, Texas A&M because that's what they can find at, uh, when they go and buy it. When you need to be wearing your UT Tyler or in my area, UT Tyler, uh, Tyler Junior College, um, uh, TSTC, the trade school t-shirts asking for those so that we're, we're promoting multiple areas. Um, we actually use our practicum students to open car doors for our primary students. And so that starts conversations with um, the kids when you have your FFA kids and their official dresses, dress opening, or you have the health science kids um, in their scrubs opening doors, then that helps start conversations at the lower level um, when it's outside of the lesson planning. Um, a big thing that we really do is we um, make sure that at the middle school level that we um, focus on career exploration. Um, we have a, we build it into all of our CTE courses at the middle school level because it is in the teaks, but we are sure that we go above and beyond with that. Um, where we're focusing on our CTE programs of study that we have and the kids, once again, our practicum kids are going into those middle school CTE mm -hmm. classes and visiting with them. Um, we have our parent nights um, at the eighth grade level where we go through high school expectations. The um, parents can then tour all of our CTE programs um, and we have a day where we bring the, the kids over. Most of the time we explore with those eighth graders, they come over and rotate through all our CTE programs. And then within the next two days, we're having that parent meeting. So we've built that excitement for our programs about, hey mom, I saw what a welder welding machine actually looks like. Let's go look at that. Cause I think that's what I might want to take in high school. Um, and then we, we've spent a lot of time de um, creating an actual high school career um, graduation book that talks about all the requirements, all our programs of studies are 
um, listed in there. And we actually, we created that well before it became a popular promotional item across at least the region seven area um, and put a lot of hard work into that. Um, at our high school, and we are a smaller district, so um, it would take a little bit of work for a bigger district, but we have a lot of small group meetings and try to do more individual meetings where we're learning what the kids want to do. Because I believe in high school, sometimes you need to learn as much about what you want to do as much as about what you don't want to do or what doesn't excite you. So that can steer your path. Because if you are in health science and you figure out that you can't stand the side of blood, it's better for you to figure that out as a freshman and a sophomore than it is for you to wait till your practicum or your college hours um, that nursing is not for you so that you can explore maybe other health science avenues. Right, that's true. Um, and then we try to offer several parent meetings throughout the year uh, where we're uh, pushing out FAFSA information, um, endorsement information, programs of study information. We try to have one in the fall and then one in the spring. Um, usually our one in the fall, we have two in the fall, one's FAFSA and then one's directed strictly towards seniors and all the information that they need. And then we have one in the spring that's um, ninth through 12th where we're disseminating all types of information. That's great. And then as far as the celebration after those uh, graduation plans are completed? Um, so we, um, we celebrate that by making sure that they know that they can, if they stay in a program of study, that they'll get a graduation cord, um, a CTE cord for that once they hit uh, being in there for four years and earn their um, IBC, we celebrate that way. Um, and they know that going in that um, that's something that they'll be recognized for later. And we actually um, have a CTE showcase along the way that we offer every year um, that they can invite their parents and show what's going on and another opportunity for the exploration of the CTE programs. That's awesome. Um, how do the counselors at the high school uh, guide that process? Because that obviously is a lot of additional things in addition to, you know, the um, social emotional well-being and guiding students and all the other things on their plate. Uh, how do you, how do you, orchestrate that so that counselors can be organized and what have you found to be beneficial? So when I was when I was the campus counselor, I had to organize this in a spreadsheet and I was tracking the data before the state pushed out their version of it with the ones and the zeros. Um, and then as y'all know, you have on data suites that you can pull reports from and all these other places that you can pull reports. Well, then I started turning that spreadsheet into where I started piling all that information into one and it was a lot on me to be able to do that because I was hand entering all that information um, but it was better for me to have it all in one place than having to look for this for the SAT scores look for here for the dual credit and look for here at somewhere else because I wanted to be able to look and see um, Melissa Foster has this, this, and this, and so she's on track where she needs to be, or I need to have a discussion with this child um, towards that. And I will tell you that after switching to Pathways, um, that with the dashboard and that all being in one spot and so much better where it's not hand inputting everything, that that has been such a blessing to our campus counselors um, to be able to do that. I wish that it was um, available when I was having to hand enter all of the spreadsheets, um, but I definitely appreciate that this is an option for them. Uh, just the the data that's ingested and, and then the ability to log and keep track of um, the items, because one of the things I know that 
happens on, on an annual basis as districts are selected for those CTE audits, yes. um, which is a big part. I know it's not totally related to CCMR, but it is in the fact that you still have to account and um, make sure that you've got students in the in the right courses and look at their completer um, rates and completion, which helps with that bonus funding and the CCMR um, as well. So uh, that's beneficial to have it in in one location. <clears throat> well, and the and the counselors will have to help with those. What you're you're referring to the MOA visit methods of administration. Um, they'll be a critical piece in that because they're going to have access to some of the data that's going to have to be collected and given to the state on that. Um, there are other audits which the counselors may be involved in that have to do with um, some of the coursework in CTE, like um, career prep classes. It, you have to make sure, help make sure that the teachers are um, turning in their training plans and those lines, because it varies district to district, the size of what the counselor scope is, um, because like at a smaller campus, you may be wearing all of the hats. You're the CTE yeah. coordinator um, or the campus coordinator or the person that the CTE director is leaning on, where the bigger schools, you may just be helping scheduling, but you need to know these things so that you are academically advising these kids in the right direction. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what other key strategies um, do you recommend for counselors and administrators both uh, regarding CCMR? <clears throat> so I really I really recommend um, going to, like I said before, a, as much training as you can, because the more knowledge you have, the better decisions that you're going to make with CCMR and how to help the kids. And we have to find that balance between what we know helps kids versus where we want to be in the accountability factor, because CCMR can um, make a difference in most of the high school level campus accountability and then the district where yeah. um, because in those areas you can if your CCMR score is higher then that's the score that's going to be reflected in those those sections so um, knowing where you are in these areas is very very important making knowing and uh, helping your teams person is very important because a lot of this is reflective of if it's not put into PEMS correctly and in the right places, then your CCMR, everything that you're doing on the counseling side that looks wonderful is not going to be reflected on the accountability side because it's not going to be there. We had a problem with our Texas College Bridge um, classes not being reflected correctly in PEMS. And so we lost a few points because um, it wasn't, it didn't upload correctly. And so we had to get that corrected um, for this school year, for this past school year, um, because we were going to, because there's certain years that you rely more heavily on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let me see. We've got a question here. Um, yeah, looking at the data, uh, and making sure there's an alignment with PEMS, kind of doing the audit of the, the courses, um, uh, all of those aspects are, are, are beneficial. Um, so the question is, what have you found to be effective for tracking these, um, different data pieces? So um, really, you're, you're going to, if you don't have a platform like um, Pathways that you're utilizing, then you're going to have to find a spreadsheet that works for you. Um, and it, it's going to honestly, and it depends on what you want it to be, because if you're using like on data suites and some, you know, Skyward and you have different information in different places, are you okay with looking and knowing, you know, this kid has a one in this category and then moving on. I wanted it all in one spot. So I would have all their SAI hand input, all their SAT scores, because I wanted to see, 
you know, what that one reflected or what that zero reflected to know how to help them out more instead of having to go to that other place. So it's really about what you want it to do and how much time you want to devote to that. Um, and remember, as a counselor, this counts towards your 80 percent you working on this spreadsheet because you're using this to advise kids. Um, so that, uh, that's a big question with the 80-20, where does it fit? If you feel like it fits into a place where you're utilizing it and it's a uh, supporting your, your program, then you code it that way. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And of course, that is another data set that counselors are expected to keep track of is that 80-20 rule of um, counseling within those different domains. And so uh, I'll just put a plug in and say that's another feature I think that Pathways um, has above some of the other um, competitors on the market is the ability to track that all in one location. You're already taking notes on what you're doing with students. And so being able to track it and then download the report that you need to justify in the event of um, an audit or, or questions. So, okay, any other questions? Well, while, while they're typing and they're thinking, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read some updates that I kind of jotted down for them sure. in case to make sure that yep. they were aware of. Um, make sure that you know your your uh, TSDS information, where your course IDs, your service IDs, you know, that changed to a new platform. So you need to be reviewing those if you have anything to do with the master schedule, because some of your numbers have changed, like the career prep numbers have changed, where like this year, if you use a career prep as a standalone class for like work program kids, there's a new career prep called career prep general that you need to be coding that. And if you use career prep as a practicum piece, there's a different code for that. So you have to stay on top of those service IDs in case they change, because then you'll end up with fatals at the end when they review PEMS. Um, your certifications, remember that the class of 2025 can be concentrators where it's a line program of study, but they have to meet that two, two courses for two credits. And then that changes for the 2026 school year um, or 2026 graduates, I'm sorry. Um, that where they have to be completers, not only for their IBC to count for you, but also to count for the endorsement area. So that's gonna be something that counselors are gonna have to pay a lot of attention to. Um, because that's that's a change for us because before you can make the endorsement kind of work however best fit the kid in the courses that they took that's no longer the case for the business and industry or the public services. Um, Texas College Bridge if you're utilizing that remember that it, it costs money this year and that for the for the class of 2026 it can only be used at, for seniors. And we're waiting to make sure that it ends up as an approved program because they've came back and said that for um, you to use the college prep math classes and the college prep English classes, that those have to be approved. And so we're waiting for a list of those. Um, there will be, they're working on a new Texas model for co uh, comprehensive school counselor program. So um, we're all waiting to see what that's going to look like and what that's reflected of. Um, another new thing this year is we can go back to utilizing job shadowing. It kind of follows the same rules as college visits. And so um, before we had kind of gotten away from that because there was the big push in the practicum and you didn't know how to um, get the students attendance. So that's another big thing that's going to help if you have a student who's in vet, the vet classes, but they may want to go and a job shadow a, um, a dentist because they really don't know what they want to be. But the program of study is this, then they can have two days as a junior or two days as a senior and kind of um, the same situation as college visits. Perfect. That's great. Thank you for that. Those updates are 
ongoing, right? <laughs> uh, okay, well, we appreciate that. I don't see any other um I see two, I see two two questions. Okay. Um, are the service IDs correct in the CO22? So you need to pay attention in the CO22 what year you're in. Um, because if you're not in the new one, because some of the CTE codes are in a different um, code table um, this year than um, the rest of the academic uh, codes. So if you're still in the 23, 24, and it says it at the top, then you need to find the 24, 25 and um, go from there. And then is there a pathway that is satisfied with dual enrollment classes? Your, your pathways are your CTE courses. So those alone will not get you a program of study pathway. Now your dual enrollment as an endorsement that would probably fall under your multidisciplinary endorsement. I'm not sure that I may need some more information on that last question to help clarify that. Okay. Thank you for that. They, those came in right as I was transitioning. So thank you, Melissa. Um, well, we want to be respectful of your time and uh, we appreciate you joining in. Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. And um, at Education Advance, we want to make things easier. That's how Pathways was actually created, was trying to reduce all those spreadsheets and incorporate the 80-20 tracking and um, ensure that not only kids are set up to be successful post-secondary, but the accountability measures um, are in compliance and uh, you're able to monitor that. And then also to check to make sure we didn't spend a lot of time talking about the bonus funding, but if you've got a strong system in place for um, post-secondary planning and execution with your students, then you're going to be eligible for bonus funding and having all that data in one place uh, makes it very beneficial. So again, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Uh, thank you, Melissa, and you all have a great day. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. If you want to learn more about college and career readiness, graduation tracking, teacher growth, assessment coordination, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Until next time.